Well, welcome, Jeremy. Glad to have you here Thank with you, us. Sir. Thank you. Amen. And I know that uh, these songs that uh, you're going to be doing during our broadcast here today and the one beautiful is off your uh, album Atmosphere. That's right. Yeah, and, it just uh, came out in August of last year. We're excited. Excellent. And it's in bookstores all over the place. So all it'd be a great one to get a hold of. Well, listen, we want to, uh, you're new here to TCT. So the way I like Science. to usually do that is to kind of start with in the beginning, everything started somewhere uh, with everyone. And so talk to us a little bit about yourself and where, I, I know you're down in, um, you're a worship leader now. And of course you're traveling nationally with your music and um, you've performed with uh, the Newsboys and some other bands. Any other bands that you want to mention? Yeah, just a lot of worship leaders. Uh, Britton Brown, uh, um, we're going to be performing with a guy named Aaron Schust, who's got a song on the radio. Um, David Crowder. Uh -huh. uh, just a lot of people. We're, we're really, really blessed. Uh, Russia Fools, we're really blessed to be able to uh, get to meet and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and rub shoulders with some amazing artists. You yeah. Know, and just, you get all inspired sometimes. You yeah, I'm sure. That, that you're like, wow, what am I doing here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's, really, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really cool. But you, hope you're, you hope you're the opening act, not the close. Exactly. <laughs> always. You always want to go on first. If yeah. you have any doubt, be like, we'll play first. <laughs> well, you're a worship leader in Memphis, Tennessee, I know, yeah. and uh, go to a great church there. Yes, What's the name of that church? It's called Christ the Rock Church. Okay. Um, Yep, it's great. It's a it's a it's a uh, multicultural church in Memphis. So if you're not obviously, some of your viewers are probably not familiar with the South, but having a multicultural church in the South is a awesome. is a God thing yeah. for sure. So we just uh, we're just we're just doing what the Lord says, man. We think the heaven's gonna look that way, and it should look like that on earth. Amen. So that's what that's what we're doing, man. We're, we we love what we do. So I think it's totally awesome. I agree. Do, tell us. You're a married man. Yes, I am. I have I'm, a little boy. I've been married for five years to a beautiful, beautiful woman named Denise. She is my definitely my better half. I always right. tell people I married up. Yes. Which is a good thing. Yeah. And we have a little boy who's two years old. His name is Judah. Okay. He's a St. Patty's Day baby, which is cool. And um, and we're expecting another one on the way. So awesome. we're 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 uh, we're growing in in uh, in a lot of ways. Yeah. How have you adapted to parenthood? Has that been good, um, bad, hard? Um, Fun. I, I'm a night owl. Yeah. And so it's made me sleep deprived. Yeah. Because it's I'm going to bed early and then, you know, I'm going to bed late and getting up early right. with children. But other than that, it's great, you know, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's stretching. I, I, when I first found out that we were having our little boy, uh, I called my dad and my dad a, was a wonderful parent. My par Both my parents were wonderful, but I just called him and I was so scared. I was just like, Dad. What do I do? I just don't want to screw them up, you know. Like you know, like exactly. Oh, yeah. He was just. He said, "Man, you just love them like crazy, man. They'll 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 turn out okay." So <laughs> that's awesome. So, well, when you were a teenager, something happened in your life. You were attending church already, from yeah. uh, from what I read, and uh, and something just inside your heart, you became uh, uncomfortable with where you were spiritually. And so, talk to us a little bit about what happened. Yeah, you know, when I was a kid. And I think a lot of people who probably watch this program can relate, relate to this. I wasn't a bad kid. Right. I'm 12 years old. I'm 10 years old. You know, what I care, I care about G.I. Joes and watching cartoons. You right. know what I mean? And, and, you know, but, but I went to church, man, and I got this real uh, revelation that, man, I mean, I was at a, you know, a Baptist church and, you know, they know how to, they know how to get people saved, don't they? For yeah, sure. Absolutely. And I just, and really and truly, I gave my heart to the Lord. Just really, I just didn't want to go to hell. Yeah. But I wasn't a bad kid, so my life, there wasn't really a lot in my life that needed to change. So, I mean, I prayed a prayer one day, and this kind of started rolling through my life. The next day, I was doing the same old thing I was always doing. Right. And uh, But by the time I got to be about 18, man, it just felt like... Uh, this got it just got to be a monotony. Church got to be something that was something that I did, and not something that I loved or was. Yeah. And man, I just began to start searching. And uh, man, I had a little Pentecostal grandmother, who who I, if there was anybody in this world that I knew knew the Lord, it was my grandmother. Man, you know, she had a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And that's what I was searching for at 18. I I, I started just being like. God, if there's anybody in this world that knows Jesus, it's my grandmother, and I want that relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And so I just became a seeker. Like a lot of people that are probably watching this show, I just became a seeker. And I said, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. I really want to know you. And, I, and he did. A week, uh, a week later, I started having these amazing spiritual experiences with him. And man, I've never looked back ever since. I, I really equate it to this. It's like 
I, I really believe I was born again when I was 12. Right. When I turned 18, it was like, if you ever, like even like a Pringles can, I just felt like the top got ripped off and right. I could, the, the, my prayers were heard. And I wasn't just praying to the ceiling. I was actually beginning a relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Now, I don't know where, you, where that is theologically, but I'll tell you, <laughs> I, I was saved. I was being saved. Sure. I am saved. You know, right. so, so, I mean, I praise God for all of that, but it was really, it was really life-changing for me at 18, you know, and I'm lucky because that was the 90s and that was in the heart of the worship movement and all that right. kind of stuff. So I was able to really find a place to really have an experience with Jesus, which I'm so thankful for. And, you know, there, it, it, going back to you're talking about being a young person, I, God is really doing a lot in our young people today. Yeah. He's really touching their lives. And, you know, my experience has been that I'm dealing with a lot of teens that are talking just like what you did back in the 90s. Lord, yeah. you know, I need something more in my life. There's got to be more to this than what I'm having right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I, when I see young people, my wife is a youth pastor. When I'm at home, I'm a college pastor and a worship pastor. Um, I love it. It's, I love local church. And what I see, man, is there, there are kids out there that are hungry. Yeah. And uh, the Lord gave me a prophetic word last year uh, to our youth. And it was, and you can go to my website. You can read the, you can read the, the little prophetic word. I wrote it down. And just, he woke me up in the middle of the night and he said, um, he, and the gist is this, God for a generation who's seen everything. Mm -hmm. This generation has seen everything. Yes. Yep. They've experienced everything. They yep. do things, they, they, do, they, they, go, they go to such extremes, there are certain kids that even cut themselves to feel because right. they felt everything. Yes. That there's a generation of kids that have, that have seen everything, but God wants to show them His Spirit. Yeah. And that's the thing that they've been missing in their life, man. And, and, and uh, there, are, there is a generation of young people that are seeking after the Lord, and there's a generation that have yet to seek Him, but God is waiting to break into them and to, to touch their lives, man. I totally believe that. Yeah, you know, we, we did a thing at our church with, um, we had the Master's Commission come in and, and uh, they're all young people and right. they had come in to do this program and they went through from the, uh, it was really cool, from the, the elders to the boomers to the, you know, the Gen Xers to the mosaics and running down the line. And with each of them, they read through, this is what this culture has dealt with, mm -hmm. this generation has dealt with. And, um, it was, it was really cool because uh, as they did it, uh, with every one, they had uh, one of the young people running around the sanctuary just showing and, and how, that they're, how that the idea was handing the baton off. And um, when they got to that last generation, the kids today, that was one of the statements they made that really caught me because it was to say that we have experienced every, I mean, we've seen everything. Have There's we? very few things for this generation of kids that they haven't experienced in high school already right, and yeah. seen and the pain of it. And one of the cool things, which I, I getting into worship now, that they said in this deal is, is that we've got to quit thinking of we're passing batons off. We're all doing this together. Absolutely. It's not about that, you know, the old people, the elders, my generation, the boomers that we're passing on saying, okay, guys, now it's your turn to run the race. Yeah. We're all in this race running together for the kingdom. And that's Absolutely. really how you prepare for worship, you were telling yeah, me. Yeah, right, right. Uh, our church, the way I look at, at doing local church ministry and doing ministry in general is ministry is multi-generational. Yeah. It's not just multicultural, it's multi-generational. And we've got to be, Paul said, I'll be all things to all men. Right. And I might like a certain style of music. I might listen to it in my car. Some people like talk radio. Yeah. Some people like jazz. Some people like, you know, old standards. And, and the way I look at worship is this. When I go into a service, what is, it's not about me. It's not the kingdom of Jeremy I'm serving, it's the kingdom of God. And so the people of God need to be fed. And so when I go into a, a, a service, I'm thinking about, hey, what can I do to facilitate everyone in this room being able to connect to the Holy Spirit, to be able to plow the ground of their heart, to be able to receive from the Word, to receive what God has for them. And so I, I kind of equated to this. I got this, I got this quote from Paul Balash, a very well-known uh, oh, yeah. uh, worship leader, Open the Eyes of My Heart. He said this, kids like hot dogs yeah. and 80-year-old women like Brussels sprouts. Right. And you've got to have the spread of the table for everybody to, to be able to feed from. And man, yeah. that, that's our goal as men ministers, as, as, as worship leaders, as pastors, is to, is to feed our flock yeah. and to make sure that they're getting the diet that they need. Yeah. We were talking about 
before we went on the set here about how uh, on Sunday we were doing the song, How Great Is Our God, and, yeah. and uh, part of the, it segues into How Great Thou, thou Art, and, oh, yeah. and how that we were, you know, like people were kind of going along and singing, and but boy, when you hit that How Great Thou Art, everybody over 45 was totally, absolutely oh, yeah. engaged all of a sudden. Absolutely. And, uh,